Hello, this is Christian. In this video, we'll look at themes in skins in ASP.NET. A theme is usually the look and feel of a web page, and skins are like the texture of your components on the, on the website, like the background colors of the side, the buttons, and things like that. So a theme can include one or more of the following content, like CSS, skins, JavaScript, graphics, audios and videos, and other resources. Perhaps the most common ones you'll see are mainly the CSS skins and the graphics here. A theme can be scoped at the server level. All the sites that are on the server can have the same theme across the entire server. They can also be scoped at the site level so that each site will have its own theme. Here I just put a yellow to show you that these are basically sites. Themes can also be scoped to the page level so that a page can have its own theme or maybe a feature on the page, for example, like sports or products page or sections can have different theme as well. Let's take a look at some examples on what theme will look like. So here is the gateway website. You see the theme here is the color dark red followed by the dark gray and some orange over here as well. If you scroll down, you're going to see the same theme color across this site. The other one is like Best Buy. You go to Best Buy, you see that Best Buy has blue and yellow and white. So uh, that's across the entire uh, page as well. You see a lot of yellow and blue here. If I go into the products page, you're going to see that it has a similar layout across the entire page. And you notice that the button also has like yellow and blue as well. And finally, the official website of the Packers um, team is green and gold and white. So that's how themes and skins can be used. So let's go and create themes and skins in ASP.NET. This is the project I created earlier in the previous video. If you missed it, you can click on the link in the upper right here uh, just to run this so you can see what it looks like. And here is the, uh, I'm going to just float this by itself. So I have a dark gray theme here, right? So if I go to other pages, you see that they have the same dark gray theme. Now I'm going to create two themes, one for the about page and one for the contact page so that it has own color. Okay, so let's go back to the code here. Now I'm going to do one more thing. I just realized that um, in the master page and the title, I didn't have a title here. So I'm going to include a title page here first. So I'm going to go and add it here, uh, page.title. And that should load the title to uh, those places. OK. Notice I also put a link here that links to the style sheet and the default um, in the styles folder here as a default style sheet. I didn't uh, view on the page over here, but goes, let's go over here and go back to the home page. If I do a source view, you see that here at the very top, it's right below the title, is the link to the style sheet. Okay, pay attention to that, and we're going to come back and compare where the links are injected after we add some theme to our page. So back in the code. Now I'm going to create a theme. To do that, you just go into the project folder here, right click on the project name, and click add and we're going to add ASP.NET folder and here's the theme so click on that and it adds a theme one folder here it has a little circle icon here but really just the theme folder so instead of saying theme one I'm going to click on it and change it to um, I call it blue theme okay a one for blue and um, I also do one more for orange so I'm going to do this again add a theme and I'll call this one here orange theme. Okay, so I'm going to just copy this style sheet here, copy it, and then paste it right into the blue theme first. Okay, and now open that, or you can rename it if you want. Um, you don't have to, but you can rename it. I, I'll, I'll just do that because I don't want to confuse with the other default. So I'll call it blue for my CSS. Okay, so this blue CSS theme. I'm going to change some color here. So the background for the navigation, instead of just this gray theme, I'll use a dark, uh, a dark blue. I'll copy that dark blue for that one. The uh, photo area also I'll use the dark blue for the background color. And the color is white for the font. That's fine. The hover. When I hover this uh, um, link, I'm going to change that to a maybe a light blue. Yeah, a light blue, a light cyan. Let's do light cyan for that one. The color would be, the font would be dark blue as well. And I think that's pretty good. Okay, so let's save that. That's all I'm doing, right? Just really tiny parts here. 
Um, and then I'm going to go to, oh, actually the body also, instead of light gray, I'm going to change to a light blue. Okay, so this is a really light blue color for the background. So save the file. Now go to the About page. And up here in the um, page tag, I'm going to enter that so I have some space. And right after the code behind attribute here, I'm going to add a uh, attribute call theme. Let me put some space in between. Okay, theme equals, and you'll see that has a, those two themes already visible here. So I'm going to choose the blue theme for this page. Okay, so I'm going to save that. And then I will just go back to the browser and refresh my page. Okay, so notice again, refresh my page. The default page is gray. My about page, you notice, is now changed to blue, right? So in the source view, uh, I'm, I'm on the home page. If I click on that, right, notice nothing changes here. Now, if we go to the about page and do our source view, you see that now I have two links to the style sheet. The first one is the default up here, and then injects this uh, blue CSS style sheet from the themes uh, page, right? So, according to the rules of precedence in style sheet, the one that is closer, or the one that loads last, will take precedence. So it will override everything in this style sheet. Anything that is the same will override that. Okay, so that is the reason why you put a theme here. Okay, so it serves that purpose. How does it know it, that it injects here and not in the top, you know, before this line? That is a really good question. You will see that here is, I'm going to make another change in here. So I apply the theme using the theme attribute. I can also apply the theme using another one called style, style sheet theme. Okay, that is also um, another way to add style sheet to the theme. The reason why you choose this is because for the following reason. So notice I changed that theme, go back to the browser and refresh my page. Notice the order of these two sheets here, okay? I'm gonna refresh this page. Boom, there you go. You see that now the style sheet that I added uh, using the style sheet theme has uh, injected the style sheet up here on the very top, right even way right above the title page here. And then the default style sheet is still down here, right? So that means because this is much lower in the page here, it's gonna take precedence. So my blue page is not gonna be affected. If I go and refresh it, you see that it, it you know reverts back to the gray, just like the home page. Okay, so that is the difference between using a theme uh, and a um, the attribute and also the style sheet theme attribute. So again, the style sheet theme attribute will inject the theme to the very top of the of the page. So if you have any uh, local style sheets like the one we added to Site Master here, I've added this one here manually so that this will take precedence. If you want your style sheet to take precedence, then you must use theme instead of the style sheet theme. Once you change it to a theme, then this will take precedence and any local style sheet you add here will be added to the top or actually above this, uh, this theme. So again, I change it back to theme. If you go back to the browser and refresh the page again, it should change back to blue. And in the source view, um, now this one here, so notice when I refresh the page, so it comes back down here right after the other style sheet, so it takes precedence. Okay, so that is the difference. All right, so finally, I'm gonna add a, a the green theme. So I'm gonna copy this, put into the orange theme, I'm sorry, orange, not green, but orange. And I'm gonna rename it to orange. All right, so everything looks the same, except the uh, the background color will be, you know, will be different. So I guess I'm gonna use it um, like the light, um, I like coral, maybe a lighter blue, like salmon will be good for the, for the background. Um, the navigation is sort of dark blue. I'll use a orange, orange red. It looks good here. So I use that for the navigation as well as the photo area. Okay. Um, the font will be dark. Yeah, we can use the dark, um, orange red as well. Uh, the background will be a, a light. Uh, the same as before, the light uh, salmon. Let's see. So let's say that that's my orange theme. Okay. So uh, save my file. 
and then go to the contact page and add the theme up here. So theme is equal to the orange theme. And save and that's it. So go back to the page and refresh this page here. So here's the default, the blue and the orange. Okay, um, it's kind of hard to see, but maybe, well, that's okay. I'll just leave it as is. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to see. Um, let me just change it to like a, just black. All right, so back to orange and then the font, I'll just change it to black right here. Okay, so that looks good. All right, so now let's create a skin file. And skin file is just a special file with a .skin extension. All it is is just a way for you to control a certain group of controls or components on the web page, like buttons, right? If you want your buttons to be in a single place, a single file, you can manage them easily. Um, any tags that you want to put in that file, you can also do that. So to do that, just go to the themes folder. Uh, right click on the theme here. I'm going to add to the blue theme only. And I'm going to add a new item. And you will see that it has a skin file here. So select that. The name will be, I'll just call it blue for, uh, well, not, not blue, I'm going to call it uh, button. Okay, so it's a button skin for all the buttons on my page. And you can remove all these comments here. Okay, so um, to do that, first let's go to the about page and let's add three buttons um, on my page. Let's say that I want to, um, uh, uh, you know, add three buttons so that when I click on that button, certain things would show up. Okay, I'm not going to implement that yet, but um, here I'm going to go to the tool and add a button right here. Um, so the text will be for this one, I'll, I'll just call it um, maybe a list of my projects. I'll add another one here, and then this will be button two and three. Uh, so this is my uh, resume, we'll load that. And here is maybe my hobbies. Okay, so um, by default, this should be kind of the default color. If you go back to the browser and go to the about page, these are default buttons. Okay, I also want to center everything here. It looks kind of far off on the left. You know, my head hurts. <laughs> so I want to change the color so it has a really light kind of like a, a bluish color, maybe a blue font or something. And so that it's unique for this particular skin. Okay, so. Let's go back and modify our skin. Well, let's go to this CSS first, right top. Let's uh, add the text align to center. Okay, I'll do the same for the other two files. So copy that and go to the orange, add that here, and one for the default too. So, okay. So now back to the buttons here. Now, I'm going to go to the design view and I'll go choose one of these and just make some design here. Now the button, I will just leave it as is. I'm not going to change the size to a certain size. I'll just keep the default size. But my properties, as you can see here, let's go and turn on the, um, the CSS property right here. Um, let's go and reset it so it's in the right place. Okay, I want the four color. The four color is the font, okay? The, the font will be um oh i guess we could keep it blue like really blue like that that's a blue font the background color for the button i'm going to change it to something kind of light maybe this light blue um maybe not so cool a little bit lighter maybe that one kind of matching the background color already i don't know we'll see and then i want the border color as well let's say i use a really dark blue like that and I want to change the uh, the width of that to be maybe like oh, just one pixel. Okay, I don't know what it looks like. Oops, let's go back and um, uh, save this file, and let's see what it looks like on the browser first. Okay, so okay, so let's say I want to keep that button for all my buttons on this skin. Okay, so now I can do is I can go ahead and then go back to the source view and refresh the page. And you're gonna see, oops, over here, my buttons down here, my three buttons. The one that I have the style sheet applied to uh, is just the last one, right? So see all these different style sheet here. So then to apply the skin, uh, you go back to your code and in the source view, 
and you just basically copy this tag. Easier way. Copy that, go to the skin file, and add it right in here. Now, there are certain attributes that you cannot add to the skin file, like the ID, right? You cannot use the ID here because, you know, these IDs are only applied to the, um, the page file. So you don't need that. The text, you don't need it. Uh, it's basically just the look and feel, the colors and borders and things like that. So at least these are the things that you need to apply to all the buttons. So I, you can save this file, go back to the about page and remove these um, CSS. Okay, so save that. Now that skin file should be applied to all the buttons I have on this, this theme. So if I go back to the browser and refresh my page again, Right, voila, there it is. If I go to my source view, review that, and you will see that all the uh, um, styles are applied directly as an inline style. Okay, this is not ideal because, um, you know, it's okay, but usually you don't do it this way. So instead of doing it this way, I'm going to copy this style rule and put it into a class. And so instead of having, you know, all these attributes here, you can move this, move this into a class. So in my, in my blue style sheet, that's I'm going to go to the very bottom down here and add a class and I'll call it the button, uh, the default for all my buttons. And I'll use this style sheet right here. I'll copy this from the page. Okay. So I had this, this is a default. Now I go back to my skin file and then instead of having all these attributes here, I can delete all of them and just use a CSS, um, class equal is called button default. And what that will do is it will just convert this to a class. It will reference this in the default. Okay, so save the file, go back to the browser and refresh the page. Just click on it and it should look the same. In the source view, refresh it, you'll see that now it use a class, right, as opposed to the inline style. So that's the idea. Now let's say I want to add another one um, that might have a different uh, skin for the button. How do you do that? Okay, so first let's go add another button to the page. And this time I'm going to add, I'm just going to control D for add, um, maybe add, uh, add two. So this is number four and number five. And let's say this one goes to my LinkedIn uh, page and this one goes to, um, I don't know, like Meta, like Facebook, right? <laughs> now, how do you make it so that these two are unique? Well, you, you do that by going to the skin file and then uh, duplicate this line again. Now you cannot have two buttons of the same type in here. If you just do like this and run it, it's going to have a problem. Okay. Just, just want to show you, that's why I try to load that. You see that has a problem because you are duplicating the same style sheet and you cannot do that. Okay. So, um, go back here and I'm going to do, what I'll do is I'll create another class for this particular one and maybe I'll call it button, um, social media. Okay. I'll copy this. I'll actually go back to my blue style sheet. And then I'll use the same. Uh, most of these things will be the same. I'll just change maybe the, um, I don't know, the, the background color. I'll make it so that it's blue. Kind of like this blue color. The font will be white. And uh, I'll leave everything else as is. Let's just say that's the only thing I want to change for my social media. Okay. And then now in my skin file, it has that different class. Now to make this unique, either this or that one, you have to include a skin ID. Okay. So I'm going to put over here on the right, far right, I put here a skin ID attribute and you give it a name for this button. So I'll use BTN SSM for social media. Okay. So if I go back to this page and if I want these two to be, uh, um, to use that style or the skin, I have to go in here and add it here. So let me go right in the top here. Skin ID is equal to, and it should be visible here. So I'm going to use that also for the second button. Okay. So now those two buttons are now linked to that second button skin. So if I go back here again, refresh my page and here we go. So now these two are now use that one here where the rest of the buttons use that default. So that's how you create skins to a website.